once the work gets to about 80, 75 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it into my fermenter that's got, it's already been sanitized. Let me start that over. Gotta love living near, gotta love living next to the airport. What's up everybody, Just Brewing here, and we're back with another grain to glass video. We're in the garage for the first part, we'll be at the table for the tasting, um, but right now it's the tail end of brew day. I just finished brewing a Mexican pseudo lager. Now, this is not an exact Dos Equis replica. Um, it's probably not even gonna taste exactly like it, but the recipe that, it's, uh, that I'm following is really just following a, a guideline for you know checking the boxes for a Mexican lager. So, um, it should turn out great. Rather than using lager yeast and lagering the beer, I'm going with Lutra Kvike yeast uh, by Omega. It's a super popular strain. If you're watching this, you probably know um, about this strain. I've used it once before, but never for a pseudo lager. Um, I'm not the first person to do it. Definitely not gonna be the last. Um, this was kind of inspired by elementary brewing. If I can, um, I'll try to put a card up in whatever side it's supposed to show up on. Um, but really, let's just go ahead and get into it. I'm ready. Uh, I just finished brewing it. I can't wait to taste it. Uh, shout out to YouTube Magic because you'll be watching me in like, you know, five minutes. So you get to watch the tasting. You have to wait a few weeks. So lucky you. We mash in with about three gallons of water at 148. I mash for about 50 minutes, um, 50 minutes instead of an hour. I checked the gravity uh, as the mash was going about every 10 to 15, 20 minutes. Eventually it kind of stabled out at about 1048. So after that, I went ahead and uh, started my sparge. I sparge with about three gallons, three and a half gallons of water, uh, right around 150 or so. After that, I got my pre-boil gravity of 1038. Right at the top of the boil, I added my hops. Now, um, full disclosure, I did not get a recording uh, because uh, I, I saw the boil, grabbed my hops and tossed them in and then looked at my camera thereafter. Uh, so I didn't get a recording of that, but you know what hops going into a boil looks like. If you don't, here's a clip. Um, but after that, I just let it boil for about 45 minutes, 50 minutes or so. I started chilling it and here we are. Um, in about five minutes, it should be getting down to pitchable temps. I checked right before I hit record um, and it was at about 110 or so. So once it's done getting down to about 80, I'm going to get it into my fermenter, pitch my yeast, and then we're gonna let it ferment at room temperature. A yeast like this generally, you know, depending on what you're using it for, it does like higher temperatures, you know, upwards 80, 90 uh, degrees. I'm gonna be doing at about 70, 75. Um, because at lower temperatures, this yeast ferments out really, really clean with fewer esters than you would get if it were at something like that 85, 90, 95 degrees, you know, what it prefers. At this temperature, it's gonna give us something like a lager. Uh, instead of, you know, that crisp, clean finish that a lager yeast would give you, an ale yeast isn't gonna give you exactly that, but one that ferments out this clean is gonna do it just fine. A yeast like this can finish in just a few days, but since I'm gonna have it at room temperature instead of its preferred temperature, uh, it may take that standard one to two weeks. I'm gonna leave it alone for about a week and a half before I get my first sample, and I'll do another sample about two weeks in. Uh, after that, I'll carb it for about three to four days. Uh, after that, you'll see the tasting. Hopefully it looks good, hopefully it tastes good. Um, I'm super excited. I've done one other pseudo lager before. It's the Light of My Life Pilsner that you may have seen um, if you've seen the hoppy hour that I was on recently, um, or if you've watched the uh, other video that I've uploaded uh, recently, so I'll just put a card here. Um, I've, I've had a good time doing these pseudo lagers and it's pretty easy to make considering it doesn't take any extra effort other than uh, some gelatin findings if you want that clarity. Uh, let's go ahead and get right to the tasting. Hopefully this is good. <laughs> Hopefully what we're, what we're working with is gonna, is gonna uh, give us a pretty good beer, so. Uh, but we won't know for another couple weeks. Fingers crossed. So after about two weeks in the fermenter, I transferred into the keg, and right around the same time, I cut up about 10 limes and juiced them. It came out to about a cup of lime juice and added that right into the keg about two days after packaging. After that, I burst carb for about three days at about 30 PSI. 
Here is the final product. Um, it is a nice straw color. It's relatively clear, all things considering, since I didn't add any gelatin findings or any other clearing agent. Um, all I did was put some lime juice into the keg and let it cold crash for a few days. Um, it has been about a week or two since I've kegged this, so it's pretty clear now. But even still, when it first came out, it looked almost identical to my other uh, Pilsner that I've done. So it's right on par with what it's supposed to look like. On the smell, you do get quite a bit of lime um, but there is a little bit of graininess to it as well, and that's kind of what you would expect out of a lager. On the taste, I think it tastes really good. You do get some of the graininess, but there's quite a bit of lime that cuts into it. Personally, we like it here, but not everybody might, so if I do this again, I may dial it back with the lime juice, maybe just a half cup, or to kind of compensate for the low ABV and just a little bit more flavor, I may up the grain bill just a little bit, maybe about five or 10 across the board, just for a little bit more flavor that would add to the body and color. But all of that being said, this is still a really good beer. If I do it again, I'll just tweak it just a little bit for more flavor. I did recently get a fermentation chamber and I've been getting into water chemistry. So this beer here, next time I do it, it should go from good to great. And I can't wait to see what some of my next beers are gonna be like. Make sure to subscribe so you can see what that's like as well. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna see some small incremental updates as we go along. But other than that, it's, that'll do it for me. Um, catch you in the next one. Thanks for viewing Just Brewing. NBC.